Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Scott as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Okay, we're back everyone, live coverage here on the floor. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is KubeCon EU 2023. My guest analyst host is Rob Streche here. Megan Reynolds is our guest. She's a venture capitalist with Vertex Ventures. Vertex Ventures, Palo Alto, Silicon Valley based VC. They invest in technical founders. Sometimes they go outside the board and hire non-technical, but mostly technical founders, uh, great firm. Megan, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you so much, very excited to be here, feeling the energy. Instuck's been on before, Jonathan's yes. not been on, so we got to get him on. Jonathan, if you're watching, make sure you come on. Mm. Um, take a little bit of time and explain what investments you have here, what's your thesis, how do you see the landscape? Yeah. How does Vertex look at this? Because obviously, it's very technical, it's infrastructure, yeah. software, AI's right here, all the buzz, mm. Kubernetes, containers, I know Docker was a big investment uh, for you guys. Yes. And they're kicking ass, everyone knows they that. Are, they are kicking ass. What's that, what, what do you got going on? very lucky there. Yeah, it's a, it's a I'll, I, can, I can give you a bit of an overview. So I, I know you know Insic, um, and maybe to just share a little bit about the DNA of, of Vertex as a firm. Uh, both Insic and Jonathan are, are the founding partners. Insic was the uh, co-founder of a, co-founder and CTO of a company called LoudCloud, which became Opsware. Um, Jonathan was the, the first hire at that business on the infrastructure side. He, uh, he then went and built the infrastructure team at Facebook from 2007 to 2012. So between the two of them, uh, the partners at Vertex, they really built a percentage of the internet and you know, have, been, have been doing that for a long time. And so really the, the DNA of our firm is, is very heavily swayed towards infrastructure and, and really a, a strong empathy for technical founders because they really, you know, as, as a team, and, and there's five of us across the team, but you know, really the, the core of us is, is really understanding that journey. Yeah. And so that's, that's where we're best. Um, the more practical stuff, we're five people, uh, we're investing typically anything from seed to series A, so all things early. Uh, and predominantly infrastructure software. Though as you say, we do do more, uh, we, we do go outside of that sometimes, and I'd say the, the key is t t like technical enterprise software. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's kind of the core of Vertex. Um, I think in terms of companies that we have here, you know, obviously Docker has a big presence. Uh, we, we came into that round relatively recently, which was a, a slightly adjacent for us. Um, we also have a lot of earlier stage companies, uh, like Gitpod, for example, okay. which is actually the uh, the reason that I know the Vertex team yeah. is that I did I led that investment at my last firm. I did that together with Vertex, saw the way that they worked and the way that they really helped build companies, and that was what really really. Uh, um, made by me the way, um, we have Justin McCormick coming on from ah, Docker at from one Docker. Okay, to yeah. do a Wasm WebAssembly panel. Ah, wow, this is like the, the, the thing about Vertex. I want to get your thoughts and chime in here because. Mm. She mentioned it, well, kind of a nuanced point, but Facebook, when Jonathan was there, Loud Cloud was the first real cloud before cloud. Basically it was a data center, right. and they had to do all those heavy lifting things. They're large scale thinkers. Observability, you're in observability deals. Yep. You got code, auto coding, you got Docker, of, obviously, yeah. containers, Kubernetes. So it's a scale thing. So how do you guys see the scale mm -hmm. piece emerging? Because Speed and scale seem to be the new competitive advantage. Yeah, I, I think that's the interesting thing is where you're making the investments is about ease of, ease of operating, right? Yes. And I think, how do you make the infrastructure run itself to a certain extent? Is that like really mm. the, the founding type people you're looking for is mm. going after those types of problem sets? Is that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great question and, and one, of the, one of the areas I love to invest in or like where, where I meet founders and I'm like, Take you know, take my money. Let, let's go. <laughs> it's it's really it's really in that like idea of usability or developer experience, and but but particularly as that ties into the scale question. So where you can take maybe a manual piece of application development or infrastructure development that maybe is not that hard to do, but it's just something that developers don't want to work on. Right. You take that piece, you make it an exceptional developer experience. You make it like a a joyful experience. And by doing that, you get embedded in the like in critical path infrastructure. So it's almost like the I flippantly say like the gateway drug. Like <laughs> developer experience is the gateway drug to like critical infrastructure software. 
And when I find companies in that space, and that, yeah. honestly, there's not lots that can make that transition. But when I see, oh, like, take, you know, let, let's go. Like, like Gitpod sort of is it? Yeah, Mega. That's, that. I mean, that's a huge point here in the open source community. The things that's changed the most is exactly what you said. Mm. The old way of just I built a tool, market it is over. Yeah. The developers have to adopt it as a community. Yeah. Whoever gets that early flywheel going. So sure. I totally agree with you on that. So the question to you is a yeah. VC, how do you squint through and predict what's going to be the next flywheel? Right. It's it's a, again it's a, it's, a, it's the cha it's the challenge. It's kind of the the million multi million dollar question. And if I had a really consistent way of doing that, I think you know I'd I'd, I'd be in a very different position. Um, I, I do think it's almost but almost more the bigger challenge is you know early on. You can, you can see where companies are creating magic. Yeah. Like where you have, maybe it's a small group of developers at first or you know, infrastructure engineers, but you can see where you know, the, in using this product, they have this moment where they're like, wow, I, I didn't think you could do that. And that's like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the core thing. And so, and so like kind of creating the flywheel, I, I think that's almost maybe a little easier to see early on. I think that the real challenge is how far can you take that flywheel? Right. You know, you start with us and like, you know this very well, like creating products, like and building product teams, yeah. you know, like when you get that love and adoption, you're like, yes, we've really triggered something, but can't yeah. like, how, how do you, how do you take that further? And how big is that market? I think is always our challenge in infrastructure. Yeah. So we, I live in Palo Alto, they call it nerd nation because Stanford's there, but Berkeley might have a different view yes. on that. The, uh, the alpha nerds and the geeks are all gravitating <laughs> towards AI right now. You yes, said, yes. And that's just a renaissance of software and machine learning. Yeah. Machine learning's been around, we just had Portwork CEO on now, part of Pure Storage. Mm. A lot of the, the best people doing infrastructure have been doing machine learning mm -hmm. at some level. Right. So AI actually is part of machine learning. Mm. What is your thesis on AI? How is that going to come in? Because there's a lot of things around monitoring, instrumentation that could be automated yeah. with bots, self-healing networks, constantly have been around for a while. Mm. How is AI going to in, impact the infrastructure? How do you look at that as a firm? What's the mm. thesis? around AI? Yeah, it's, 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 it's ra developing so rapidly that uh, on, honestly, I, I don't have a, hey, this is exactly where this market's going to go. Yeah. And, and I think if you have anyone telling you that right <laughs> now, uh, they're, uh, they're, not, they're not necessarily telling the truth. So I'll, I'll be very open about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think uh, fundamentally where we're investing in infrastructure and software infrastructure, uh, you know, the, the, the workloads are only increasing. Like the complexity of workloads are increasing, yeah. the sheer amount of data is increasing, and so everything that we've been kind of early investing in, I think it, it's only accelerating. Those markets are only accelerating, and so like, if anything, we're, we're more, more bullish in our existing thesis. Um, I think what we're seeing right now in investment sentiment is is predominantly around like application AI. So where like generative AI is where is like a, in the application layer for like sales, marketing, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I and I think. I'm, I'm not as bullish. I'm not as bullish there, but I do think that the impact that has on infrastructure yeah. will will, uh, will be important. Yeah, and I, I think um, we've been talking about this all day, but it, I think part of it has been that it, you have to know the data set to be able to use ML or AI or something mm. to that extent. And I think what you hit on is there's more and more, and I think mm. the data infrastructure and how you move mm. that data around, how do you get and yeah. utilize that data. That has to be one of the spots that you're looking at pretty heavily yeah. when you're. For, for yeah. sure, and I think yeah. what, what we're seeing a lot is uh, where that's that's moving from pu like purely data use cases or data team use cases to actually how do you en enable developers to use data more effectively? Right. And it, you know we're, we're seeing that in the in the Rust ecosystem particularly. There's a lot of tooling yeah. being built in the Rust ecosystem for to help developers basically do what you would want to do with Python, yeah. uh, but in a in a more efficient way. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're, defi we're definitely seeing that yeah. happen a lot. Megan, I loved your earlier comment. Take my money. Now, people <laughs> want to hear more of that. Yeah. So let's yeah, get yeah, to yeah, that yes. So how do you get to yes? If I'm an entrepreneur, they're watching. Mm. They want to get to that yes. You want to mm. get to that yes spot where, and I got to say no a lot. I know VCs do mm. that. That's the understood. Where are you focused on? People that are watching that are entrepreneurs, there's a lot of people, you know, mm. looking at the market saying, I see clear line of sight onto some opportunity that they're recognizing. Mm. They want to go capture it. Where, where are you going to be hanging out and looking at? When you say infrastructure, is that going to be mm. plumbing, cloud native networking? Is it going to be more? I mean, what, what would be your, where are you going to be focused on? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a big question and, and uh, you know, we, we, really, we really span across the infrastructure landscape, but I, I think for me personally, it's, it's exactly what we spoke about earlier, which is what, who are the companies creating like, uh, exceptional developer experiences, and specifically 
I think when we get really excited as a team is when it's like, when teams, when companies are building proprietary technology. I think we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of like iterations on technology. Mm -hmm. I think especially in the observability yeah. space. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, we do it a little faster, we do it a little cheaper, we, you know, and, and we hear a lot of that and, you know, it's, you know these spaces as well as I do. And I, I think where it's, hey, look, we've really identified a technical innovation in this space. And we are the team, we're like the one team that can build this product. Are you, do you see overcrowding love. in certain areas that you're staying away from? What would be that like? For sure. Observability, at one point, there was like, what, 20 venture-backed observability companies? I, I, remem I remember coming to the last KubeCon, and I, I kind of walked into a similar into the similar conference space. And at one point, I, I was standing there, and I, I kind of scanned around. And it was observability for like serverless, observability <laughs> yeah. for this, observability. observability and I was like, <laughs> wow. Like, and, and, and yet, you know, exactly what we said earlier around you know, workloads increasing, data's only increasing, and so like, it, it's a very crowded market. But I think if like, with a lot of the stuff we're seeing right now on open telemetry developing, there are still challenges with using that, uh, and like the cost is coming down dramatically, especially yeah. with generative AI. And so like. We've, we've gone through, there's definitely like a generational shift in observability, I mean, but I think we're maybe coming through some new. A lot of kernel programmability going on. Yes. You've, got, you've got security EDPF. challenges inside the containers. Yeah. Yep. A lot of infrastructure, software-like yes. issues that are yeah. going on. So I would say it's crowded, but we're still, we're yeah, still yeah. actively we're still actively looking in those spaces. And, and I, you know, obviously for any investor, it's always it's always team led. You know, why why is this the right team and why is this the right time to build this yeah. company? And it's always like, the same. Rob, thing. Rob and I were just talking about code pollution, where mm. as ChatGPT comes in, we were talking about this earlier. Morning, yeah, yeah. More code's going to come in. Who's going to watch the code being coded? So if you have interesting, code, yeah, I like coming that. In, I like that. It's, it's like okay, that's going to change the observability landscape mm. big time. 100%, and we're already starting to see this a lot in like CICD, like what's happening in CICD right now. Right. You have the kind of first generation, you obviously have the GitLabs, the GitHubs, and the harnesses, um, but exactly, like as, as that like deployment phase, like code build phase gets more complicated, you have more actors building code, you know, how do you, how do you build the system so that before you deploy anything, you know you, you're working on the right things, and like testing everything within that. So it's, a, yeah, it's an area we're excited about and we're act actively digging in. Well, Megan, thanks for coming on. Yes. Tell Insuk, I know he's in Thailand. Insuk, if you're watching, I know you're in Thailand. <laughs> uh, have a good time. Yeah. As we wrap up, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, what's the pitch? What do you, how, do, how do they get your attention? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm very available. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Megan Reno, uh, and you can also email me, megan at vvus.com. Yeah, but we'd love to. We'd love to hear from more people. All right, she's ready to give her money away. She said, "Take her money. <laughs> you got to hit that." Take my money. That's yeah. the hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> give up her productivity. Give up her um, IP. Mm -hmm. Good thesis. It's the cube. We're we'll back with more live coverage. Day one of wall-to-wall -wall three days coverage. I'm John Furrier with, with Rob Stretchy. We'll be right back. <laughs>